This is the uninhabited island of Tanaga. Between Russia and Alaska, it's part of the Aleutian Island chain, also part of the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge, home to threatened and endangered species, and home to this, remnants of World War II. Appears to be a heavy oil, should be able to clean it up. The Corps of Engineers is identifying contaminants as well as unexploded ordinances dating back to the 40s. It's a big job, but before work can even begin, people and equipment have to just get here. It is the most remote location I've worked at, and I've worked in Alaska for 30 years. First, there's a 1,300 mile flight from Anchorage. Then there's an overnight in Adak. This was an old naval base. Known as the birthplace of the winds. The wind, plus a healthy dose of fog, means a 40 minute helicopter flight to the island is swapped for an 11 hour boat ride. And we've been on the boat for about 10 hours. So in about an hour, we'll get to Lash Bay. Lash Bay, home away from home for a diverse team, including environmental engineers, <laughs> geophysicists, an archeologist, and the most popular, Rainy night, sugar hay, you know, give them something warm for the heart. The Corps and AECOM spent almost an entire year just coordinating logistics for this remote site. It cost $2.6 million getting equipment and supplies to support a 40-person camp for about five weeks. Working between the Bering Sea and the Pacific means rain and wind, not to mention the challenge of getting to 13 different testing sites on a very soggy island. When we're driving these probes down into the ground, that computer will be able to tell us the intensity of the concentration of fuels or diesel or oils that may be down underground and, uh, and then at what depth they're located. This remedial investigation will define how much material needs to be removed. The work here and work on a neighboring island won the Secretary of the Army Award for Environmental Restoration. Mary Cochran, tonight.